welcome to a Tutorial Tuesday. In this Tutorial Tuesday, I'm going to run through some exercises using a technique for solving network diagrams that I can pretty much guarantee you will work all the time. No matter how complex the network diagrams get, you'll be able to solve them, you'll be able to figure out the critical path, you'll be able to calculate all the different variables or all the different things that we calculate as we go through the forward and backward paths. These are the types of network diagrams that you may see in operations or project management classes and that you may encounter on the PMI exam if you ever take that to get your project management professional certification. Now, as I said, I'm going to give you a foolproof way to do this. As such, it may seem a little bit goofy at first. Prof C could certainly go much faster, and certainly on these simple ones I could. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down a little because I want to make sure that I never make a mistake even when I get to the most complex, the most harried looking network diagram you ever saw. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm simply going to make sure, I can get a better dry erase marker next time, but I'm going to make sure that when I do these diagrams that I'm always going to be stopping and asking a question. And here's the question that I'm going to be asking. I'm going to be asking are there any other options? Okay, so let's look at this one here. Let's say this is task G and um, we have a uh, 5 here and a duration of 10 we might think, okay, well, we're just going to put that 5 over here, and then automatically we can do this calculation. That'll be 15. That will work on simple network diagrams. But the problem is when we get into the complex ones, it's not going to work so well. So what we want to do is we want to always stop and say, okay, that's one candidate. Now are there any other candidates to consider? And if there was an arrow coming in here on our forward bat past calculations. I would say, wait a second, maybe that has a bigger number. If it is not a bigger number, if it's a 2, then I'll go ahead and simply put the 5 in there like I was originally might have thought I was going to do. But if it's a 10, well then that number goes in there. Same sort of thing with these internal calculations. Think of the start and the finish of a task as just being loosely related. Okay, so they're just loosely related. So uh, 10 plus 10 is 20. I always like to say 20-ish. It's a little trick there when you're doing math in public. I always say ish because in the range of numbers from 0 to infinity, 10 is kind of 20-ish. Um, so you can, uh, anyway, all kidding aside, uh, 20 is the candidate there. Now if I had some other uh, relationship, like a finish-to-finish -finish relationship, and I had a bigger number, like 30 coming in here, well then that 30 would go in there. Okay, so like I said, it seems a little bit goofy when I'm doing these initially, but you're going to see that it actually works out much better in the long run when we get into these really complex ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this process with Network uh, Diagram 1, and then I'm going to um, maybe speed through network diagram 2 and 3 a little bit faster and then we'll do 4 and 5. These are the ones that are more complex. You'll notice here that I provide you with solutions as well so you can also do these on your own and try it out and if you get everything correct maybe you don't need to watch the rest of this video but I will try to put chapter timestamps down below where I solve the different problems and so if you want to skip to those and just see the particular uh, problem where you got uh, had a little bit of an issue, you can certainly do that. So let's go ahead and get started here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put 0 in the early start of A. Uh, 0 plus 2 is around about 2-ish. So I'll put 2 near the early finish. I will not actually put it in this block yet because I want to take a little bit of time to look around. Okay, so I want to look around and I want to see 
are there any other arrows coming into the finish? And if they are, do they have bigger numbers? Okay, but I do not see that. I don't see any other arrows, so I'm going to head and put two there. And once again, I'm going to put that two that would carry forward in the forward pass into all of these. Once again, I'm not putting it right directly in there. And I realize some of you are probably already thinking, well, you could. And yes, I could. This is a simple network diagram with just finish to start relationships. But I want to get myself in that habit. I want to get in that habit of looking around, trying to figure out if there's other options. That way I won't get tripped up later. I don't see any other arrows that are coming into the start there, so I'll go ahead and put a two there. I'll do the same here, and all of these should be the same. So two plus 18 is around about 20. And I don't see any other arrows coming into the finish of E. There's no finish to finish relationships that E is involved with. So I'll go ahead and put that 20 there. Same sort of thing for D. I'll put that 15 up here. There's no other relationships as far as the finish of D. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in there. Um, I'll once again put the candidate for C. And I see that. Uh, 12 is, uh, in fact, my only option, so there's no other arrows coming in there. Uh, 2 plus 15 is around about 17. It's always a danger doing math in public, um, so uh, hopefully I'll do this all correctly. Um, 2 plus 15 is 17. Oops. 17, so uh, I don't see any other arrows, so I'm okay to go ahead and put it into the early finish. So now we can move forward, and you see here for F, I have a candidate of 12, oops, 12, <clears throat> but I also have a candidate of 15, so I'm going to put 15 there. Well, which is the biggest number? Well, it's 15. So 15 plus 15 uh, is around about 30. And I, once again, don't see any other arrows coming into the finish of F. So I'm going to go ahead and put 30 there. Uh, once again, we're going to have another situation. This is a so-called merge situation, where we have two tasks are merging into one, so to speak, as far as their dependencies. So I have 17 as one candidate, 30 as the other candidate. Well, which is the bigger number? Well, I think 30 is. Uh, 30 plus 10 is around about 40, and I don't see any of the arrows coming into G, so I'll go ahead and put 40 there. And 40 is therefore my candidate for the early start of H. But I have to look at this other arrow coming in here, and that's 20. And so of the two numbers I think 40 is the bigger number. 40 plus 5 is 45. And so once again, I'm going to put that number there. I see no other arrows. So again, I'm going slow. I'm going much slower than I would have to because I'm stopping and putting these numbers outside of my network diagram and considering other options. But that will come into play later. That will help you out when we get into these really tricky ones. That's why I say this is a guaranteed method. So we always put 45, or we always put the number um, in, in here for the uh, late finish. So 45 minus 5 is about 40. I don't see any other arrows that went out of H. So I will go ahead and I will put 40 in there. 40 is the candidate to come back to here and is the candidate to flow back to, through the relationship with E. Okay, I kind of think these are kind of like Sudoku. You can kind of do them until you get stuck, right? So I kind of just continue on a path till I get stuck. So I see no other arrows that went out from G, so I'll put 40 there. And 40 minus 10 is around about 30. Uh, once again, uh, I don't see any other arrows or any other relationships the start of G has, so I'll go ahead and put 30 in there. 30 would carry down to here, and it would go to B. Okay, I don't see any other 
arrows that went out of B, so I'll go ahead and put 30 there. 30 minus 15 is uh, around about 15, and uh, so that's one candidate. Oops, let me not put it there because it looks like it's for the other one. Uh, but I don't see any other arrows that went out of B, so I'm safe to go ahead and put 15 there. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to come back over here to F, and I'm going to put... Why didn't I proceed to A? Well, because 15 is now just one of several candidates for the uh, late finish of A. Okay, so 15 is one of my candidates. I got to do the rest before I can finish this up. Okay, come back over here. 30 was the candidate that came down from G, and I don't see any other relationships that F has, or it's finish uh, of F has, so I'll put 30 there. And it looks like 15 uh, minus, uh, 30 minus 15 is around about 15. And so I'll put 15 in there. So 15 is the candidate that goes back to here. 15 is the candidate that goes back to here. And a 40 was our candidate that came from H back to E. So I'll go ahead and uh, start the top here. I'll put 15 here because I don't see any of the relationships that C has. Um, 15 minus 10 is about 5. And I don't see any other relationships there either. So I will go ahead and put that 5 there. 15 will be the candidate that wins out here. There's nothing else that's a candidate. 15 minus 13 is just about 2. So I will go ahead and put that in there. And then finally, I have 40 is the one that came back from H. So 40 goes in here. And 40 minus 18 is around about 22. And I don't see any other relationships that E has, so 22 will go in here. So now for A, we have that candidate of 15. We have another candidate of 5 from C. We have another candidate of 2 from D. And we have another candidate of 22 coming from E. Well, which is the lowest number of those four possibilities? Well, I think it's 2. Okay, And 2 minus 2 is round about 0. And so uh, this is going to end up being 0. We can calculate the slack now. The slack is just the difference between the uh, early and late start and early and late finish. We could actually do it on the uh, start of the task as well as the finish of the task, but we don't have to do that because um, they will be the same since we're in a relatively simple situation here. And one of the definitions of the critical path is a path that has zero slack on it. So you can start to see what our critical path is. It's also the longest path through the network. So we can see that A, D, F, G, and H comprise our critical path. Critical path is the path um, where there's no slack. That means that there can be no delay. So if one of these tasks takes longer, if F ends up taking 16 days, uh, then our entire project may be delayed. I say maybe because maybe we can make up the time elsewhere. So once again, this is kind of a slow way to do it, but you should see that I've got everything correct. Okay, hopefully I've done all my math correctly as I've gone through this, and you see that this is the correct answer. One thing I'll point out is that if you're doing these type of network diagrams and you have something like this with A where you have a beginning task that kind of bursts, maybe it's a celebratory a task that bursts into all the rest of them, and it's sometimes a good idea to put one there uh, just to uh, make your calculations a little easier, your checking a little easier. If I was to get back to here, instead of zero, I had like... 10 or something, that would be wrong, okay? And I certainly could not do it if I had like a negative 5, okay? You can't have negative time, as far as I know. Uh, time seems to only be measured in 
positive increments. So um, that's just one thing to look out. So if you're starting out and you come back on a network diagram like this and you've got you know, a four there, um, that's a problem. You've made a mistake somewhere. So let's keep going and complete network diagram two. This is also a relatively simple one in that we just have finished to start relationships. I'm going to be asking those questions as I go along, just like I did in the solution for network diagram one, but I'm going to maybe go a little bit faster here. So I'm going to put a zero here and I'm going to put a zero down here. So that is a little bit different here in that we don't have just one task that is uh, our starting task. So I'm on the lookout here. I'm on the lookout for any other arrows that are coming into the finish of A, but I don't see any. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that internal calculation that 0 plus 2 is 2. Same sort of thing here for B. I'm still looking around and I'm trying to see if there's any other arrows coming into the finish of B. I don't see any. I'm going to go ahead and put a 4 there. Now, I don't see any of the arrows other than the one coming from A coming into C. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, my uh, 2 there. 2 plus 5 is going to be 7. I would stop and I would look around and I'd say, okay, wait a second, are there any other candidates? Okay, so I might put it on the outside. But if I've looked around thoroughly, I can go ahead and say, no, there are not. And so I'm going to put 7 there. Here, I have to look at two different candidates. I have a 2 coming from A, and I have a 4 coming from B. So, like I said, once you get a little bit better at this, you don't have to write every single candidate down. You can recognize, okay, wait a second, here's a, here's a situation where I do have to evaluate which is the bigger number. Remember, we always take the bigger number on the forward pass. And now, um, down here, there's only one arrow coming in. There's no other arrows going to the finish of E, so I can move ahead. 5 and 7, 7 being the larger number, goes in there. And 7 being the larger number goes there as well. 7 plus 2 is 9, and I don't see any of the arrows coming into F, so I'm safe to put the 9 there. 7 plus 4 is around about 11. And I don't see any of the arrows coming in G, so I'm safe to put it there. And now I have my two candidates of 9 and 11. And the bigger number is, oops, 11. 11 plus 2 is uh, uh, round about 13. And so I'm going to put that there. I didn't see any other arrows coming into the finish of H. And now I'm ready to do the backward pass. So I'll put a 13 here, subtract 2. Once again, I would consider that candidate to be 11 now. I don't see any arrows that went away from the start of H, so I'll go ahead and put it in there. 11 goes back here. Don't see any of the arrows that went away from G. Um, same thing here. And uh, I do those calculations. I don't see any of the arrows that went away from the start of F or from the start of G. Oops, yeah, that's correct, okay. Um, so now I'm going to come down here. I don't see any other candidates besides that 7. So 7 goes in there. 7 minus 1 is round about 6. Okay, and then I'm going to have 6 as a candidate there, but I don't put that in to B yet because there is, in fact, another arrow that went away from B. So I've got to see what comes back that way. So 7 is my candidate from uh, coming from G back to D here. And so I'll go ahead and put that in. And then uh, I'm there on the uh, D. I can make that internal calculation again because I don't see any arrows going away from the start of D. Here as well, I can take that 9, put it in there, 4. Uh, now I have two candidates. I have a 4 coming from C. I believe I've done that correctly. And I have a 4 coming from D. So 4 is my candidate there. 4 minus 2 is round about 2. 
Now notice on the previous one, I said that if you had a number greater than zero, that was not gonna be correct. But in this case, that, um, that was only in a situation where you just have one starting task. In this case, I have two starting tasks. So one of them had better have a zero in the late start, but it doesn't have to be A. Okay, so now I have two options down here. I have a four and I have a six. Once again, on the backward pass, we're taking a smaller number, so four minus four is zero. Okay, and so it looks like B is on our critical path, but we have two days or weeks or whatever our duration is of slack. Okay, so you'll see um, our critical path starts to become obvious to us. We don't really even have to do this, hopefully. We can do that math in our head. So it looks like B, D, G, and H is our critical path. Okay. And it looks like we did that basically correct. So we'll move on to network diagram three. So network diagram three should be no more complex than the ones we've already completed. Once again, I am going to start to ask those questions in my head, so maybe I'm not going to put it out there as much, but I'm only going to stop when I see a situation where I have two arrows coming into the start or finish of a given task, like right here. Five goes there, two plus three is five, five is counted over here, there's no other arrows coming in there, so five goes in there. No other arrows coming into the finish of D, so seven goes there. I have a six coming from C, and I have a five coming from B. Well, six is the bigger number. And uh, six plus two is around about eight. I see no other arrows coming into the finish of E, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. I then have seven and eight as possible candidates for the early start of F. And I think eight is the bigger number. And eight plus four, uh, it's around about 12. Down here, it's 6 that comes into here from C. And then uh, 9 um, is a result of 6 plus 3. At least I hope it is. Like I said, doing math in public is dangerous sometimes. And then uh, 12 is going to go in here. 12 plus 2 is around about 14. I can then start my backward pass. You can see here, this looks like this is gonna be on the critical path. 12 is gonna come down here. Nine's then going to go way over here, but I can't put it in yet because I noticed I stopped myself from doing so because I noticed there were two arrows that left C. So I've got to see what other candidates there are. Okay, eight is here, so eight can go over here. And eight also goes down here. Okay, so we see here that um, this has, oops, some slack on it. This does not have any slack on it. This down here has three days or three durations of slack. Now nine was the candidate that came from there. Six is the other option. We take the lower number. So in this case, six is the lower number. Subtract so four would be two. I see no other arrows that went out of C. And uh, so therefore two is also a candidate here. Uh, over here I have uh, both uh, six uh, as well as six. So I have, uh, I can pick one of those sixes and um, I will pick either of them. And um, then I can do that internal calculation as well. Seeing that I have one day of slack there. 
I have zero there. So my candidate is a two or a three, and I think the smaller number there is the two. And boom. Hopefully that's correct. So we see that A, C, E, F, and H are our critical path. Okay, and it looks like I did those correctly. Cool. Well, now let's get complicated. Let's get really complicated here, and let's go ahead and dive into Network Diagram 4. Now, I'm going to go slow again. Uh, as we go through Network Diagram 4, I'm going to go pretty slow so that we can make sure we understand what the heck is going on on such a complex network. Well, let's go ahead and identify a few things from the get-go. The relationship between A and D happens to be a start to start. D starts two days, or I'm going to use the word days, but uh, two weeks, whatever it is, two days after A starts. So it has no relationship with the finish of A. Okay, we have most of these are finish to start relationships. We also have another one over here that is, uh, this is a finish to start, but we have one here that's a finish to finish. And we have another one here that's a finish to finish. Okay, so this gets kind of complex. So we not only have some start to start and some finish to finish relationships, we also have all these lags involved. Now, what are lags? Lags um, do not take up actual work, but they take up time, and we have to calculate them as we move forward through a network and as we move backward through a network. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and start this out, and I'm going to put zero here, and zero uh, plus one is one. I don't see any of the arrows coming into the finish of A, so I'll go ahead and put one there. Okay, I'll go ahead and put one up here. I don't see any of the arrows coming in the start of B. Uh, one plus five is six, and I don't see any of the arrows coming into the finish of B, so I'll go ahead and put six there. That six is a candidate here, but we have another arrow coming into the start of E, so I can't put that in there yet. This one would carry forward into C. So 1 plus 3 is 4-ish. Once again, I would look to see if there's any other arrows coming in to see. I don't see any. Now 4 plus a lag of 3 is 7. Okay, so we have to add that lag. So what's the bigger number there? Let's I put this up here so it's more clear. Well, the bigger number is 7. Okay. 7 plus 2 is 9. I don't see any of the arrows coming in there. I'm going to go ahead and put the 9 there. So let's uh, move forward here. We see uh, 9 can then be a candidate for H. I don't see any other arrows coming in there, so I'll go ahead and put 9 there. 9 plus 3 is around about 12. And so I will go ahead and put that there. Because I see no other arrows coming into the end of H. Good. Now 4 plus 2 is 6. There's a different lag here. The relationship between C and G has a lag of 2. I don't see any of the arrows coming into G, so I'm going to go ahead and put that 6 there. But if I do 6 plus 4 is 10, I do see another arrow coming into the finish. G has a restriction that it cannot finish until three days after F is finished. Okay, so that may affect the earliest time that we can finish. So I need to stop there. Let's go back over to A, and let's um, look at how it affects D. Here's a common mistake that students make. They see that lag of two, they look at the finish of A, and they put 3. But that is not the relationship. It's two days after A starts. D has no relationship with the end of A, or the finish of A. Therefore, it's going to be 0 plus 2. And I'm, if I do my math correctly, I think 0 plus 2 is around about 2. OK, 
Okay, so now we can put all of these uh, in here and finish this up. These are simple relationships, finish the starts. But then I get here and I do a four plus five is around about nine. So you know the arrow's coming into here. But nine plus three, I think, is around about 12. And so that's one of the candidates for the early finish of G. So remember, G cannot finish until three days after F has finished. Therefore, the bigger number here is that 12. Okay, and so that 12 goes there. So things get weird. Okay, things get weird when you do this. We're going to probably find that this task G is going to have a different amount of slack on the finish and the start. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one of the consequences of weird network diagrams. But don't worry, you can do it. You know how to do it. So now we've got that 12 there. 12 plus 4 is right about 14, I think. And then um, 12 uh, is the other candidate here. So 14 goes there. But wait a second, I've got the same situation now. 14 plus 2 is 16, but G cannot, I mean, J, I rather, cannot finish until five days after I finishes. So I have to calculate and see if that's going to be a bigger number than 16. Okay, so this relationship here is a simple one. So 9 goes over here, but it's 9 plus 4, which I'm thinking is right, right around 13. Then plus a 5 is round about 18. So in fact, that is the limiting factor on when G can finish. Is, oops, sorry, it went into the corner there. Is 18. Okay, so 18 is what's going to go up here. Once again, by stopping to consider at each level whether we have an arrow coming into there, we are able, or there are other arrows that are coming into the finish or the start, we're able to do these forward passes correctly, no matter how complex it is. Now let's do the backward pass. And so the backward pass here, I'm going to go from, uh, I'm going to start out with 18. Um, minus 2 is 16. I don't see any arrows that came from J. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put 16 there. And this is another common mistake that students make. They might take this 16 and minus 5 off of it. But I and J have no relationship with their starts. It's only with their finishes. So 18 minus 5 is going to be 13. 13 minus 4 is going to be 9. 9 is going to be a candidate to go here, but I can't put it in there because I do have another relationship to consider. Okay, so 16 is now going to come back to G, but it's going to be 16 minus 4, which I think is around 12. And then 12 minus 3 is about 9. Okay, so in this case, 9 goes here. Okay, either, either 9. But we had to calculate that first. We had to look at that 12 minus 13, and we then, uh, minus 13, minus 3, rather, um, is equal to 9. Uh, 12 minus 4 is going to be right about 8. So here's where we get into that weird situation that I mentioned we might encounter, where the finish of G has no slack, but the start of G does. Okay, let's go and uh, go ahead and complete this. We have kind of got through the most complex parts, I think, or most of them. 16 goes here. 16 minus 3 is around about 13. 13 carries down to here. 13 minus 2 is about 11. 11 minus 3 is right about uh, uh, 8, I believe. So 8 is my candidate there. But I also have 8 minus 2. Well, that candidate is 6. Okay, remember I have to subtract those lags. 
So the six goes there. Okay. And notice I've got some slack here now. Six minus three is three. Likewise up here, I've got some slack. Oops. 11 would come back over here. There's no lag between B and E, so 11 would come over here. Uh, 11 minus 5 is 6. I would see that I have a slack of 5 here, so I have different slacks all over the place. Um, coming down here to F, uh, 9 minus 5 is 4. And then 4 would carry into here. 4 minus 2 is 2. I'm just going to go ahead and put in those slack values. Now getting to here, I have an option of 3 coming back this way. I have an option of 6 coming back this way. Okay, so either one of those could go there, but I take the lower number and it's 3. Now why don't I take D, the 2 minus 2, or even just take the 2? Well, because D and A have no relationship in terms of A's finish to D's start. However, D does have a relationship with the start of A, so I have to consider that as a possible candidate. So 3 minus 1 is around about 2. That's one candidate. And I have 2 minus 2, so 0 is my other candidate, and I think 0 is probably the smaller number. Okay, so I told you things would get weird, and things got weird. So that's network diagram 4. Network diagram 5 is similar, and I'm going to let you do network diagram 5 on your own, but I'm going to point out a few things to help you get started. And that is, where do we have funny relationships? Well, most of these are finish to start, but we do have a start to start between D and E with a lag of 5. We have a finish to finish between D and E with a lag of 25. You would probably never ever see that in a quote-unquote real-world example, but you know how to do this now, so you can do it no matter how complex it is. Uh, we also have a start-to-finish relationship uh, where basically we're saying D can't finish until C starts, 20 days after, D, after C starts, rather. So there's a lag there involved. And we also have finish-to-finish -finish relationships between G and F and between E and F. Okay, so once again, this is a little more complex. Um, hopefully you'll be able to figure this out and get um, these results. If not, leave a comment below, and I'll be happy to um, let you know uh, maybe where things get wrong. Um, but once again, go back in the video I just did for Network 4, and I think that you'll see how I make that calculation each time, and I'm looking for other arrows, other candidates. So thank you so much for joining me on this Tutorial Tuesday. Please let me know what other tutorials you'd like to see, what other uh, areas you'd like to see explained or concepts you'd like to see talked about, and I will be happy to do that. Thank you so much, my colleagues, and have a great rest of your day.